Hey there, I'm Chief Meteorologist Jason Smith. Sorry about the audio problems. If you were joining us live a few minutes ago, we think we have that resolved. So we're going to give you a little quick update on what's happening in the tropics. And uh, we are watching an area of disturbed weather, which is currently located in the Atlantic. And, you know, it's completely surrounded by dry air. So this is a feature that is not going to develop in the short term because the air is so dry around it. The odds of development are at 50% days two through seven. Nothing's going to happen in the short term. It is headed towards the greater Antilles and also potentially around the Bahamas that area and you could see the orange shading where we think there may be some development as we get towards the end of the week and into the weekend so uh, let's take a look at this thing here and it looks like this shot's a little tight here too so I'm going to try and uh, move the camera up here just a little bit oh that's a little bit too much how about that well all right we'll keep it right there and let's take a look at it so we've got a feature here in the tropics and uh, i'll play the the graphic for you this will be the next one in the slate this is the actual satellite image and there's almost nothing going on out there as far as uh, convection. This is a look at the amount of dust that is in the atmosphere. This has been the real inhibiting factor to tropical development over the last couple of weeks. We've been getting these big plumes of dust off the Sahara Desert moving out into the Atlantic. That's completely normal for July. It's something that we normally see less of as we get into August and September. And uh, those dust plumes have limited our tropical activity for a couple of weeks. But if you look over into the Western Atlantic and around Florida and Cuba and even into the Gulf, you can see the dust is just not quite making it all the way over to us. And so what's happening is it's mixing out, the drier air is mixing in and final, and getting more entwined with, in, in, intertwined with some of that tropical moisture. And there's really not a lot of um, dust to keep something from forming as we head into the end of the week and the weekend as you get over towards the Gulf and the East Coast of the United States. So it will be a little bit more favorable from an atmospheric dust standpoint for the possibility of some development. You can see how these plumes of dust are still coming over into the Caribbean Sea, but they're starting to get more spotty. And we're getting into the first week in August in the forecast. And so our wave feature, if we look at it here, I'm gonna bring it up full so you can see it. And uh, it's currently located in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. There's still a lot of brown stuff in the Atlantic Ocean. That is really dry air. And so as long as that's going on, we're not gonna see any kind of tropical development in the Atlantic. But once it gets on over towards us, if you look at the Gulf where you see Mobile, Miami, Cuba, those areas, there's a lot more atmospheric moisture and so there will be a more favorable environment for um, an atmospheric st uh, moisture standpoint for this to possibly develop. What about wind shear? Well, this wave, this is through Wednesday, will be in an area where there will be some wind shear in the greater Antilles around Puerto Rico. You can see the blue there. The highest wind shear is in the Caribbean down around Jamaica. And uh, still a lot of wind shear over Cuba, but a light shear environment by Thursday starting to set up over the Bahamas and we'll continue to see a fairly light wind shear environment along the east coast of the United States. So this is another factor in the reasoning that we probably won't see any development in the short term uh, around Puerto Rico or around the Northern Leeward Islands. But once it gets further over to the west, it'll have a little better opportunity to develop. Now, water temperatures are not a problem. They're scalding hot. We've got water temperatures where the wave is right now around 83 degrees. They go up to 85 degrees once we get off the Bahamas and they're even warmer in the Gulf. So, you know, there's plenty of warm water out there. It's just some dry air and some wind shear that's going to limit this thing in the short term. So let's look at some modeling. I've got a circle on here to kind of show you that wave. And we're just going to run this thing all the way out to the end of the run. And the GFS kind of splits it off, doesn't do much with it, and takes it over into the Gulf of Mexico as of Monday around noon and doesn't do much as far as any significant development. They kind of track it along there 
Uh, we've got it positioned over the northern Gulf Coast sometime early next week. Now that would be a problem for us if it was a strong system, but remember it'll be closer to some wind shear if it takes that track. Here's what the European model is saying, something kind of totally different. It takes more of a northerly track north of the Greater Antilles. And then again, we're, we're circling an area that's not that strong, but the European actually does develop this thing into a tropical system next week. They have it up off of uh, Florida and the Carolinas. So a totally different outcome. I think that the, the more likely it comes our way, the weaker it would be based on what we're seeing in the short term and it, the more likely it would be stronger if it goes up the east coast of the United States. So that's a look at this wave. It's just a wave, something to watch, a little area of disturbed weather interacting with a wave. And we'll keep an eye on it as it crosses through the Atlantic and I'll have a complete update. I'll be on air on Fox 10 News at three o'clock, which is in about nine minutes. So we see there also be on air at four, five, nine and 10 p.m. tonight.